Hi everyone, um, I've been asked a few times about my signal path, about um, what I'm using and uh, how everything is recorded. Um, I start with a couple of cheap drop boxes. I bought two of these, they were 12 ways, and they were very, very cheap, uh, 10 meter long. So, you know, I've got one on, on that side of the room and one tucked up over here on this side. So um, as you're watching the videos here with the drummer over there in the corner and everything, he's all plugged into one and of course bass and guitar and everything over there. Now they all feed along the wall behind my desk into the interfaces. Um, I have two different choices of interface. I either use the Soundcraft UI uh, 24R. Now this one here I use out on location mainly. Uh, because it can record directly from the front right here. Um, I've got a little powered hub and um, USB drive plugged into it and it can record you know 20 things at once. Uh, probably plus, plus your little line in if you can get a keyboard into there. I occasionally do that's 22 tracks at once. 24 bit 48k onto the stick or onto the drive. Very handy machine to have. Um, I rarely use it as an interface in the studio but I have done in live streaming um got some pretty good pre's on it and this is really cheap machine in australia these are about 1500 bucks um in america they're probably on about a thousand um these things are really seriously good if you want um and you use an ipad of course to control this so it's just like a stage box everything goes in that line across the top is outputs left and right, plus all of those things there. I don't even run any fallbacks. I use them for in-ear monitors, because remember, we don't use monitoring or a PA. That's how we get our sound. Everything goes in, gets mixed through your iPad, and then um, the outputs feed your live feed or, um, I, or your in-ear monitors, up to eight. That's plenty. And, um, and it all gets recorded onto a drive for you to mix later and, and put together. So... Great little machine, but generally, what I'm using is this, a fairly cheap interface, this one here, the Steinberg UR824. So it's a USB device, it's got eight pre's on it, two on the front, six on the back, plus your eight outs, which are balance jacks. Um, there's your, you know, controls over, over you know, your typical eight in interface. Steinberg's, you know, two mic line, the high Z's, they're all um, multi-jacks, up to eight. Right. So that one there, it's got a couple of headphone um, outs, which I'd never use. It's flashing eight out right now because I generally get its clock, 48K clock, from the interface above. Now, this used to be my interface when I had my old Mac. It's a Firewire interface. It's a Focusrite. Um, this is the Sapphire Pro 40. Now normally this only works as an interface, but I've put it into standalone mode. I plugged it in as an interface and I've basically saved its settings as 24-bit 48K audio. And it um, uses its light pipe on the back, it's fiber optic, because this bottom one here can take two more fiber optics. It can go up to 24 um, inputs, eight of its own, plus 16 more coming in from boxes like this. So don't throw out, your, throw out your old interface, put it into standalone mode, and it becomes an 8 pre. I know it's locked at 48k 24-bit, but that's your maximum you can get out of a light pipe anyway. Good interface, that one. I thought that its pre's were great. I made records on that for years. It's also got its own fiber optics. I just don't use any of those anymore. It's my free little um, mic pre. What's it going to be worth for me to sell? 300, 200 bucks? I'll keep it. And this, this one on the top, this is the old um, Platinum Octopri, the Focusrite Platinum Octopri. Came out a long time ago, um, but, and each one of these has, you know, it's, um, has dynamics on it as well, low cut, a line switch, you know, 48K. So these guys are really, really nice pre's. It's very big interface and goes all the way back in my rack. It's quite heavy. It's got a fan makes a bit of a noise so i don't have it on all the time unless i need it but wow what an amazing sounding interface i scored that on on ebay for 300 dollars australian and anyone who knows these things knows that that is a bargain so 
you know, even now at its age, I think it's probably late 90s, mid 90s, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, very, very nice pre, very, very good pre's, and I've got an extra eight there. So basically I go eight plus eight plus eight, there's my 24 inputs, and um, they're all fed into that one USB um, audio interface, my Steinberg UR824, um, 824. and of course that goes into Logic, and some, <clears throat> just try and show you here. So in Logic, in my preferences, I have audio preferences. Now I use the Steinberg as my input device and I use a Motu 896 that's over here, this guy here. That's an old Firewire interface as well and I'm running that through a um, Lightning to Firewire interface from my Mac. Um, so that one there, it's got eight pre's of its own inputs, of course, and I don't use them. It's got nice big Canon outputs, though, and so I use that as my output to um, to the, you know, my monitor switcher, which is one of these Behringer uh, Zenit Control 2s. So this is a USB interface as well, um, but it's got lots and lots of inputs and outputs. I've got lots of speakers. I'm running, you know, event... 2020 Bass um, version 3s, Control 1 JBLs, um, they're in every mall, strip mall and, um, and you know, um, hairdresser, barbershop, so I want those uh, monitors to sound good on those as well, and uh, my V6 KRKs, um, I never go off over that sort of size in Woofer, I wouldn't go to an 8 inch in, in this room, it's just too big, um, so those plus my little Grover nodding um CR2s I think they are. Now these are all um you know basically put so this this is my output wrap. I've got some wireless um in-ear receivers um and uh, the interface then I go to a, a passive switch box that goes from my you know cubes this is all my passive speakers basically in a box all run from that amp. It's not a really high tech rig um nor expensive um, I think maybe a lot of you are going to be surprised about how uh, cheap and nasty some of my gear is here. I could use a much, much better amp there, but yeah, you know, I'm getting I'm getting an okay sound. Over here, I've got some Crick speakers, um, your high-end audio file lounge room sort of... Cricks are Australian-made. They're very good. You know, they're in all of our theatres and stuff here. So um, South Australian-made, actually. So fantastic speaker. Um, and they're just a stereo pair of a surround system basically the, the Crix KDX's fantastic rig so you know in all my my system is not a very expensive one um I do have a, a, a couple of flash toys like my Raven touchscreen and stuff like that is a cool flash toy they're not that expensive anyway really if you want to know about um making the best out of your own rig um, contact me and I'll try and, um, you know, I'll send, send what I can. Let me know what you've got. And if you want to improve it, um, I can certainly tell you what to do best bang for buck. I built this over years and, um, you know, it's it has everything I need. I would love to still buy um, some more things. I've got a couple little toys in my mind. But, you know, I could really, uh, a lot of this stuff is unused as well, In, in you know. So um, it's really about being smart. I'm not a rich person. I've got a family and a mortgage like everyone else and I'm just um and I'm a sole trader. So I work all alone. I don't um employ people. So I've got to watch my my money and what what I'm spending here. So um I'm I'm smart about all that stuff. So I hope that this has been informative. I hope um I haven't blabbed on too much and said um too many times. Uh so <laughs> this is the end of the video. Give us uh, um, a contact if you need any more info. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching.